Just a reminder, these are all my opinions and are of course subject to change. This is all subjective after all. Discussion is always welcome. Just don't be a butthead. So my all-time favorite podcast, The Weekly Planet, has been promising a certain review for three years now. I figured it must have been because this movie was so rich in content, they didn't know how to put it into one contained episode. Or maybe they were just too busy watching the movie Red Notice, the most popular movie of all time. I'm actually watching it right now as I make this video. So I thought I would help them out with this one. That's right, today I'm doing what The Weekly Planet won't, and that is covered the sword wielding back in black ninja warrior extraordinaire snake eyes you would think a property like gi joe would be extremely easy to make a movie about i mean they're literally elite military soldiers each having their own unique and special skill set to fight the evil cobra commander yet every live action attempt we've gotten has been boring bad and bland and the most recent version we saw was just an empty warehouse and a business card. So that's fun. To be fair, I had no idea what I was getting into with this movie, but I was hopeful maybe the action would be worthwhile or even the origin story would be engaging. Spoiler alert, this movie is neither of those things. So here we go. The movie starts with tween Snake Eyes and his dad walking through Washington State 20 years in the past. Long story short of this overly long opening is Snake Eyes' dad is on the run and they're hiding out in a safe house. The bad guys find him and make him roll a pair of dice to see if he lives or dies. He rolls Snake Eyes and then gets shot and the house gets set on fire. So this movie starts with our hero's dad rolling snake eyes and dying. Then from that moment on, the son decided to go by the name Snake Eyes. I looked everywhere and nowhere in any origin for this character is that how he got his name. Wiki told me it's because he possesses the steely gaze of a serpent, and that's how he got his name. No mention of a dead dad anywhere. Snake Eyes in the comics did get disfigured in a helicopter explosion, and that's why he wears the mask. Thank you, Meso, for teaching me that. We flash forward to present day, and Snake Eyes is all grown up and making his living by being an underground fighter. That's where Kenta, the big baddie of this movie, is introduced and he wants to recruit Snake Eyes because he's impressed with his skills. We then flash forward again to four weeks later. That is three time periods in 20 minutes. Snake Eyes is now a part of the crew and spends his days getting picked on by Tommy, AKA Storm Shadow. The job that Kenta recruited Snake Eyes for is to cut open fish and stuff guns inside. What a great use for a man who's trained as a ninja. But as it turns out, there's a mole in the organization and Snake Eyes is ordered to kill Storm Shadow, even though all we've seen Storm Shadow do is be mean to Snake Eyes and call him Fish Boy. Uh oh, here comes Fish Boy. For some reason, Snake Eyes decides he needs to spare the man who has been nothing but mean to him, and then the two team up and fight their way out of the fish market all the way down to the docks. They attempt to escape in a truck, but dozens of guys with swords just start stabbing it all over, and then eventually the cops arrive to put an end to this absolute stupidity. Snake Eyes then wakes up on a plane, and it turns out the guy he saved was really the grandson of a very important clan leader back in Japan. But it also turns out that the bad guy Kenta was also once a part of this clan until he was banished. So that made Tommy go all the way to America to go undercover in Kenta's organization in order to... Do what exactly? He wants to kill Kenta, but all he did was call Snake Eyes Fish Boy. Here comes Fish Boy! Also, wouldn't Kenta recognize him? Storm Shadow tells us later in the movie that they grew up together, so clearly they would know what the other one looks like, right? Stupid. Stupid movie. It turns out this clan is super old school and does not like outsiders at all. Storm Shadow vouches for Snake Eyes to his grandma, who it turns out is also the clan leader. And so Snake Eyes then has to take three tests, which upon passing all of them, he will be considered a member of the clan. So the first test is to take a bowl of water in four attempts from some guy named the Hardmaster. What did he say? Hey! 
Snake Eyes ultimately succeeds because he humbly requests they swap bowls. Even though Snake Eyes has only been there a day, he's allowed to just demand keys for one of the bikes, and he rides off into the city after passing the first test. Turns out he was secretly working for Kinta at the same time, and Kinta brings him proof that he knows who killed his dad all those years ago. The proof is the dice his papa had to roll before he was killed. Kinta tells Snake Eyes that there's a secret hidden artifact within the clan and he wants it. So if Snake Eyes brings it to him, he'll give him the man who killed his dad. Now this whole time, the head of clan security, Akiko, but she's been following Snake Eyes and she's not a fan of him at all. However, when Snake Eyes gets back, it turns out Storm Shadow knows Kinta is in town and he comes up with a plan to go and get him. They also take a brief moment to name drop G.I. Joe for the first time by saying Scarlet is their contact and they can call her for help. And we get a Cobra mention because the Baroness is also working with Kinta and this movie needs to at least pretend like it's a G.I. Joe movie. All I could think about was how eventually Storm Shadow is going to become Cobra Commander's personal ninja bodyguard, and currently Cobra is the one who he's fighting against. I can't wait to see how the sequel navigates this one. It's nice to see Samara weaving as Scarlet, and Ursula Corbero does a pretty good job as the Baroness too. Too bad they feel like afterthoughts put into this movie and do nothing for the entire two hour runtime this movie has. Snake Eyes takes another trip to see Kenta, and the Baroness is there to tell him that if he fails, she'll basically kill him because Cobra is here to tell you they're the bad guys. In case you forgot about it, the movie is still doing these stupid tests, and the next one starts when the messenger from 300 tells Snake Eyes to follow the light. This causes him to trip balls and have a flashback to the night his dad was murdered. The purpose of this is supposed to show Snake Eyes that he needs to move on and let go of his past, but because he kind of sucks in this movie, he doesn't learn anything. Then Snake Eyes decides to tell Akiko his backstory and she tells him he needs to succeed at the next challenge or he'll die. So the third challenge kicks off and they lower Snake Eyes into a giant pit. And you want to know what's down there? Giant pythons that only attack people who aren't pure of heart. But because Snake Eyes has learned nothing and is still willing to betray this clan for his own selfish reasons, the snakes attack him, and Akiko saves him from being eaten. Grandma clan leader then threatens to punish Akiko, but then Snake Eyes tells her his backstory. If you're keeping count, that is three backstory retellings in less than 20 minutes. That night, Snake Eyes goes full ninja and steals the secret gym from the vault. Akiko catches him in the act and he just punches her in the face in order to escape, which is very ninja-like. Snake Eyes brings the gym to Kenta and the Baroness and in exchange, he gets to kill the man who killed his dad. Even though Snake Eyes told us at the start of the movie that he wasn't a murderer. I'm not a murderer. As it turns out, the guy worked for Cobra, and in that moment, it finally clicks to Snake Eyes that Cobra are the bad guys, and he just gave them a very powerful gym that can wipe out the entire clan that was nothing but nice to him. We are then treated to a fight on motorcycles and on top of a car hauler semi truck that looks like they were 100% shot on a budget green screen. The fact that this semi-truck didn't flinch even while getting shot at makes them the real hero of this movie. By the time Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow, and Akiko get to the clan, the whole place is on fire and Kenta is on a killing spree. The remaining good guys take on Kenta and through a little trick called blowing him up, they are able to get the gym away from him. Storm Shadow picks it up and tries to use it on Kenta, but misses, which allows Kenta a chance to escape. The final final fight is just Snake Eyes dragging Kenta down into the giant snake pit, and because Kenta is not pure of heart, he gets eaten. Then Snake Eyes is literally saved by a giant snake because he has finally learned how to have a pure heart. Too bad that because of all his actions, he ruined this clan forever. Turns out because Storm Shadow brought Snake Eyes in and vouched for him, he's to blame as well. And because he tried to use the gym's power, he's no longer allowed to lead the clan. So he leaves on his own accord, telling Snake Eyes that the next time he sees him, he's basically gonna kill him. For some reason, Scarlet thinks Snake Eyes would make a good member of G.I. Joe, even though he caused all these problems 
and is kind of a bad person. But the grandma still gives Snake Eyes his iconic armor, and the movie ends with Snake Eyes and Akiko going after Storm Shadow to bring him home. Which makes no sense, because Storm Shadow literally wants to kill Snake Eyes. Because again, this is all Snake Eyes' fault. At this point, I want to extend my sincere apologies to the Weekly Planet. I fully understand why you didn't want to talk about this movie. One major problem is the fact that Snake Eyes, in the Snake Eyes movie, is a bad character. Snake Eyes says he doesn't want to be a murderer at the start of the movie. I'm not a murderer. Yet his whole drive is based around revenge on the man who killed his father. But as soon as he starts his escape with Storm Shadow from the fish market, he never stops murdering people. The movie doesn't really give us a reason to root for Snake Eyes because he refuses to learn anything until it's too late. He's been looking for a place to call home since his dad was murdered, and every test and every lesson along the way is telling us, the audience, that he should side with the clan and stop Kenta, even if it means he won't get his revenge. But by the time he finally does learn his lesson, there's already been so much damage dealt, and he's been such a bad person, you don't really want to be happy for him. Snake Eyes caused all these issues, and everyone forgives him for no reason other than the movie needs Snake Eyes to look like a better hero than he actually is. I actually kind of felt bad for Storm Shadow, and I don't think they meant for that to be the case at all. Even the action in this movie isn't worth watching, and the fight scenes go beyond what's unrealistically funny. Every fight is one to five of our action stars taking on dozens of guys who just stand around and wait for their turn to attack. The action is very clunky because you can obviously tell that everyone is just waiting for their moment to move in, but if this was happening in real life, everyone would slice these guys like they're Swiss cheese. And at one point, Akiko basically becomes Mary Poppins because she flies straight up. This movie didn't establish the rules enough for us as the audience to know whether it's meant to be silly or serious, so it falls into just stupidity mostly. I really hope they make a better G.I. Joe movie one day, but until then, the movie Snake Eyes gets a lovely spot in just plain garbage. Hey everyone, if you enjoyed this, don't forget to check out my video on the movie The Planet of the Apes from 2001. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and comment down below what movie you'd like to see me cover in the future.